much. On what point? Well, on the points that she was just making. Well, she made, she made a number of points. I, 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 well, I mean, you, you heard them. No, I, I don't. I, I'd like to respond. No. I disagree yes, yes, you, do, you disagree yeah. with Rhonda. Why? There's a tendency for us when overcoming stereotypes to dis dismantle Islam into many different things and many different pieces. Nevertheless, there's still an orthodoxy, there's still a sharia, there's still a consensus and a series of tradition that attempts to interpret these laws. Looking for flexibility, looking for engagement and cross pollinate ideas with modernity doesn't require us to completely smash the tradition into multiplicities. And that's where I disagree. It's not about, and again, Muslims in this conversation are being hijacked. We're supposed to be speaking about the source of fear of Islam and once again, we're on the defensive. Trying no, to, no, I think this again, is in, But I think this is interesting. Once again, the conversation is becoming about what is the nature of Islam. Well, I think because I think people want to understand that. And I think it's interesting to hear that there are different views about this, with it, that the Islamic yeah, there, community we, we is we not should, a monolith. We should, it has but it's, a bit, it's, a bit rich, it's a bit rich to say there's this threat, the verse, the Quranic verse to say X, Y, Z, whilst on the ground, for example, the US has over 800 military bases around the world, outside the United States, hundreds of those in the Muslim world. So who's taken over whom? OK, I want to get back, I mean, though, to the, to, the, to, the, to, the different, to the range of views within Just the Muslim point, Jamie. communities. And I would, stress, I would stress the plurality there, rather than it being a singular but monolithic that's, that's group. And myth. that's what I'm interested that, in getting to. That's the myth. There's a, we should foreground Islam instead of Muslims. Of course, through Muslims, there's plurality. But Islam still has a center. And it's it's worrying when Muslims themselves try to dissolve this centre. OK, Mariam, is that your Islam? Is that when you hear that, that there is a centre, that it's absolute, that you can't... No, no, I said it's absolute. I said there's a centre. All right, that there's a centre. No, 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 just, I want to hear from, from Mariam. Look, if I pose the question back to you, and if you had to articulate for me what Islam stands for and what Islam is in one sentence, it'd be very difficult to no, define. No, it wouldn't be at all. Look, it, I think the point that you've raised is is a good point in the sense that we're not a homogenous group of people. Um, we cannot be painted with the same brush either. And uh, just the views in this room it, are so diverse. And that's a representation of one-fifth of the world's population. So this whole, um, you know, uh, with all due respect to these people that go around, pretend, you know, terrorism, terrorist um, that... I, the name I give them is lunatics, essentially, that commit atrocious crimes in the name of my faith frustrates me and makes my blood boil. Um, and, and a lot of the perceptions about Islam is gathered through, you know, the, the media's focus on terrorism. And um, as for me personally, Islam, you know, condemns terrorism. The acts that took place on September 11th, the okay, Bali okay, bombings, let's, let's the London bombings... If Islam condemns terrorism and at the same time Islam is many, What's your reference point for saying bin Laden is wrong? What's your reference point for saying the racist interpretation of Islam is wrong? There has to be a centre that can distinguish right Islam from wrong Islam. And this is what I'm sensitive about. You guys are dissolving the centre simply so we can where be seen. Where is the centre? Yeah, it's where is the centre? Yeah, so what, okay. what do you think the centre is? Of course. Is? I mean, you just go across the Muslim world, you'll find an orthodoxy that grounds it in the Quran and Sunnah. It's very where? clear. Where? Who? Yeah, we try, Who? Well, we're trying to say that 90% of the Muslim world that fall under the category of Sunnah Okay, doesn't exist. But there's diversity and plurality of opinions okay, okay. within I'm, I'm, I find this really interesting. I'll get to you in a moment, okay. Iqbal. But Yasser, I'm interested in your, in okay, your background you an... as well, because you grew up in Melbourne with what you describe as secular parents. Now, you say you're someone who's trying to be a more traditional Muslim. What does that mean? Well, that means that I'm moving away from the idea that Islam is nothing more than a catalogue of personal Muslim opinions, that there is a tradition there. There is a necessity to engage with the tradition. We should be searching for a voice from above. Even if we can't find it initially, there's still, there, in our tradition, there's an ascetic, legal, spiritual lineage that goes back to the prophet. OK, but, but you also say that you have a complete mistrust of Australia. Why? Because I think the conversation isn't at all times honest. For example, nobody wants to acknowledge that there's a centre in Australia, a white Australia, that determines what is acceptable and what isn't acceptable. It's not visible, but it's there and it's productive. And OK, Rhonda, you, you're sort of arguing with, with some of these notions. Well, Just I, I agree very much that there is, there are 
basic principles that Muslims believe in. And you could take a, you know, a Turkish Muslim, an Albanian Muslim, an Australian Muslim. And what are those things? Well, belief in one God, um, pr the five pillars of Islam, so praying, charity, the, the ethical and um, moral objectives and messages in the Quran, the, um, the, the history of Islam. I mean, there are, there are basic tenets um, in Islam that we all universally believe in. But I, but I think it's very naive to think that, um, that Sharia, that, that legal rulings are derived in a vacuum. That, that people do not bring their own, you know, histories and politics and, um, you know, social prejudices to bear when they interpret the Quran. You're dismissing the tradition here. There's I'm a not, solid, but there's a sort of fic, there's sciences that definitely, that, that but determine you, are, how we interpret. Exactly, but you're still a human being interpreting something. So every human being is going to interpret something in a different way. It's channeled through the human mind. Okay, Iqbal, your, your response to some of this debate, and I mean, and, and the idea of these very different views that exist within Muslim communities about interpretation of the Quran, whether the Quran should be interpreted at all or can be interpreted in particular ways. What, what's your response to that? Sure. I think the, the one thing that I will agree with the Yasser is that uh, the topic today is fear of Islam. Let's talk about contemporary world and contemporary Islam and contemporary societies. You have a tenet of Islam in the Quran where it says that the country that you live in, it is the laws of that country, the, the the, everything that goes within that country is what you embrace when you go to that country. Each and every one, and some of us, like uh, Sister Mariam here, I'm sure, was born here, have chosen to come to this country or to America or to Canada or to England. When you go to that country as a Muslim or as a Jew or as a Hindu or whatever, then that is the country that you have to abide by and the legislation and the rules that goes within that country. Now, in terms of Australia, we've got some 100, 120 different nationalities or ethnicities of Muslims in this country. There is one Islam, of course, but we come from different countries and therefore their cultural context and other things that come in. In terms of Islam, algebra was given to the world by Muslims. There have been great inventions by the Muslims. In terms of Muslims and great leaders in the past who have embraced Jews and others into, uh, into their world. Albania, there were many, many uh, Jews who were harbored and given shelter by Muslims. I mean, that is not the Islam that we are talking about here. So there is a lot in Islam that has given to the world that this debate is not bringing okay, out. Okay, gentleman over here has had his hand up for a long time. Yep. Um, uh, the show's about fear of Islam. Um, today in the, the US state of Oklahoma, the voters are being asked whether they want to amend the state's constitution to prevent the possible introduction of Sharia law because of uh, seeing what I'd refer to as Sharia creep in some European countries. And uh, it seems very concerning to me as someone who knows nothing about Islam and has nothing against it, um, that if, say, you, you, you can convict a, a theft, you, you chop off a hand, or if a woman is raped, she's stoned to death because she opposed, supposedly asked for it. Um, how can, some, can someone here please tell me? Um, can someone here? No woman I get a quick can response from you to that, no to that, to that man's concerns? Well, as I said, uh, what he's talking about is the very long penal codes that one finds in the multiple, multiple schools of Sharia. Um, and those are absolutely, totally and completely incompatible with human rights, with modernity, with constitutionalism, with democracy. There's no question about that. But there's also no question that there isn't a single Muslim individual or institution in the United States that's calling for those laws. And indeed, passing a law in any state in this country saying that, you know, the Sharia cannot be a legal code here is sort of like passing a law forbidding Americans from riding unicorns. Because we actually have a constitution. We only have one penal code in the United States and it applies in every single state every single city no matter who's there this is part of the fear-mongering uh, that has gripped the United States the notion that we need to pass a law forbidding the uh, institution of a foreign law in the United States when that is completely forbidden by the Constitution anyway is yet another example of targeting Muslim communities because they are seen as different or other or exceptional in some way. OK, we're going to have to go to a break. And after the break, we will look at whether there are limits to religious freedom and what all this means for a multicultural society. That's next on Insight.